Welcome everyone to this video. Today I'm going to walk you through how to increase security and privacy here in Safari web browser. And with Safari open, we're going to come up here to the top left and click on Safari and go down to settings. And in this window, we're going to actually start with the advanced option. And if we go down here, we can see there's a section for privacy. You will want to make sure the box is checked to use advanced tracking and fingerprinting protection. But notice by default, it will only do it in the private browsing. You can set it to work in all browsing. And then next, allow privacy preserving measurement of ad effectiveness. So when this is checked, it allows reports to be sent to advertisers and what Apple does is they anonymize those reports. Now if you trust Apple you can leave this checked on however if you're looking to increase privacy and if you're skeptical and don't trust Apple to do that effectively you will want to go ahead and uncheck this box. And then the last option block all cookies you can block all cookies to increase privacy but just keep in mind checking this box may cause some things on websites not to work correctly. Next, click on extensions. Now, extensions are fun and convenient, but they are terrible for privacy and security. And I don't have any extensions installed and I would encourage you to do the same. The one exception I would make is if there was an extension for a password manager that I was using, you could keep that, but all other extensions I would go ahead and remove. And so from this window, you'll have a list of your extensions down the left-hand column. Just click on them and each one will give you an uninstall or remove option. You'll want to go ahead and do that. Any legitimate extension can be hijacked. So you want to keep that in mind as well. Next is profiles. And basically this gives you the option to compartmentalize different websites that you visit from each other to prevent tracking across various websites. Now the suggestion here is to make a profile for work, for school, you could also set one up for personal or for shopping. I would recommend if you're looking for top privacy, you're going to want to set up a profile per website. I understand that that can be a little tedious. And so if you do find that a little bit too much, you can go with more general categories. So you will have to make a personal decision there. But to set up a profile, you just click on start using profiles. We'll call this one banking. We can select an icon and then a color. And then we'll go ahead and click on create. And you'll notice that it will now appear up here in this menu. And so if I were to create additional profiles, I'd be able to select them from this menu. For this to be effective, you do have to remember to select the correct one for whatever it is that you're doing. If you ever need to make any edits, you can do so from here. There's general and extensions. You can also remove if needed. Here on websites, in short, you're going to want to double check every category down the left-hand column, but pay very close attention to for example, camera, which is sensitive, you can change the option per website, or you can just change it in general to whichever option you'd like to use. I do recommend denying or at minimum asking. I would not just set it to allow. Also, microphone, another sensitive one you'll want to set. Again, you can set it per website if you'd like to do so. Screen sharing is also another sensitive one. And then location, I would also pay special attention to that one. But again, make sure you're checking every single category. The more you set to deny, the stronger your privacy and security will be. But again, that will come down to a personal preference that you have to make for each category. Underneath privacy, you will want to check the box to prevent cross-site tracking, as well as hide IP address from trackers. You could require a password to view locked tabs underneath private browsing. If you want to do so, you just check this box. And then if you need to manage website data and want to clear it out, it will list any data that's been collected and you can hit remove all and then remove and then done. And then please note, clicking on advanced settings will just send you back here where we were earlier. Underneath security, you will want to check this box to warn you of fraudulent sites. And then JavaScript, if you uncheck this, it will increase security, but Websites will probably not function or most websites probably won't work correctly. So you just have to keep in mind, yes, this will increase security, but things probably will break. Underneath search, you can change the search engine options. I would recommend DuckDuckGo to increase privacy. And if you're someone who shares your computer or someone else has access to it, you might want to consider unchecking these boxes. That will have to be a personal preference. They are convenient, but Again, unchecking these will increase privacy, especially if someone has access to your browser. Passwords, you do have to enter in your computer password to manage these, though I would strongly recommend using a dedicated password manager instead. Underneath autofill, I would strongly recommend unchecking all of these. If someone gains access to your computer, they're just going to use the autofill. 
to generate this information, so it's best to have it unchecked. Underneath tabs, you could increase privacy by automatically closing tabs at a set time. And then underneath general, you can set Safari to open in a private window by default if you would like to do so. So that way you don't have to remember to do it every single time you open up Safari. You can also change these options as well to whatever you'd like to do so. For example, you could increase privacy by going to an empty page. You can set your history to remove after a specific time, or you can remove it manually by coming up to history and clicking on clear history. And then you can select all if you'd like to clear all and then click on clear. You can also have downloads be removed after a specified time. And then if you're someone who has a history of installing things they shouldn't, you may want to even consider unchecking this box so files don't automatically open. Now additionally, you can come up here to Safari again, and you can go to Privacy Report, and then click on Show More. Now I don't have enough data collected here to generate a report, but it does give you some information of some of the built-in features. Once you do have enough data collected over the last 30 days, you could view this to see how you're doing. Just please be aware that it is available, and this is where you find it. Also, please be aware that as you're viewing websites, you can click on this icon to also get a summarized report. Now, while Apple has made improvements to Safari to increase privacy and security, there are still some better options available out there, such as Mozilla Firefox, or if you want something that's more similar to Chrome, but values privacy and security, I'd also recommend Brave. I will link both of these alternatives down in the video description, down in the notes. That is everything for this video, but if you do have any comments or questions, please post them down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider sharing it. And if you would like to support the channel, go ahead and hit that join button, the subscribe button, the thanks button, and that bell notification icon to get notifications on future videos. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day.